So I want to talk a little bit about what happens when you start putting all of the controller pieces together, and particularly going past just the LQR, the linear quadratic regulator block, and then kind of extending this out with the estimator and the things that we start seeing as we put this together. So we start seeing in a typical control system, particularly for optimal control, as well as you start getting into starting asking questions of robustness, you start asking questions about um, the structure where you have your core system. This is going to have your linear equations. And typically you're gonna have a U and a Y out. Remember there's an A matrix, there's a set of state variables, X that I care about. And so I'm going to have that space for, and I'm gonna have A, B, and C matrix, uh, or a D matrix, and we can as well in terms of there's feed through terms, What's really cool is that I take a look at my system and then I can, I can build from there. Now this can be, typically we talk about this as an LTI system, you know, so it's gonna be linear time invariant. You can also do this when it's not linear time invariant. But we're gonna start from that kind of mindset mostly here. And so you start off with your system, you have a U and a Y and you build from there, right? So Y is the output because of the thing that I'm going to get is I'm going to have a number of states X, but I'm going to have a, you know, I'm going to have a certain number of inputs U that allow me to drive the system. U is usually less than or equal to the number of X. And then Y is usually less than or equal to the number of, of X. And so I'm often dealing with this constrained question of I've got U and I've got Y and I've got a lot more going on inside. Uh, on top of that, if we got a little more interesting, there's also you know, capabilities of disturbances hitting the system, noise hitting the system. Sometimes we put them in two places, sometimes we put them together over here in terms of the way we talk about that. How does our system behave with all of this? Good questions, right? And that's where we begin there. And then one of the simple things we know is that if, if Y is the size of X, or basically I had all of the states X, I know I can take those outputs and run them through, you know, LQR, so linear quadratic regulator. I could use a simple um, sort of connection to U based on X, you know, in terms of a matrix multiplication matrix, and assuming that between my A and my B matrix that it is um, going to, you know, that everything is, is considered controllable. Everything is good, right? I can actually, I know I can stabilize it except that I have a small problem. I don't actually usually get X, I get Y. So if I get Y, I actually now have to then say, hmm, I like to use this LQR formulation, but I'd like to estimate what X is. That would be great, okay. But that means I need an estimate. I need to have an estimator. So a linear quadratic estimator, I build this as a state system to actually do this. So that state system might be Hey, if I know I have, you know, for my for my x, I might say, well, okay, x might look something like this, or you know, I might actually have x look something like this, is where we started. I'm going to build an estimator that actually has an additional term, you know, k sub f, that allows me to ask some questions going forward on this. And I have a sort of error term that I need to work with here as I put this together. And so that becomes a whole conversation unto itself. It's like, oh wait, I'd like to be able to estimate the X of T from the Y of T measurement. So from Y of T, and you know, hey, I got U of T as well, so I might as well use that as well. And sort of estimate having both of those, could I do it? Well, what I could do effectively is build my own uh, state system for X and U, I have U as the actual U. I know that my A, I know my A and B's at least in theory. And so then what I do is I then say, hey, let me build an additional term on this to be an error correction to kind of to kind of have force things in there. This is very cleverly picked to kind of get to this sort of structure. And what you see very interestingly enough is that if I do that, K sub F is some matrix, I pick that, so now I look at the dynamic of it. Well, and then I put in C because C is what's constraining me for Y. I have the same C that's going to do go from Y hat to X hat. 
because after all, I might as well make sure that it looks the same because I'm going to try to make the same kind of state system. And I go, all right, here's what I get here. Let me define error as x minus x hat. Roll this all the way out. So I get this is the, this is the term that I would have had for my normal structure because right, this error is x and xt. So now this is now a difference of derivatives. That's the first one. This is the second one. This comes from here. Notice something. The two b's go away. Um, notice that the way this is done, it both has c's in it and k sub f in it. And I've got a and a, a of x and a of x half. That's going to be error of that difference, right? which is what I get there. Here I'm going to get another difference, which is also going to be that is also error. And you're thinking, wait a minute, this is good, right? Because the sort of thing I would want to make sure that this is stable in the original system for the case of f, I would, the case of f I would choose by some optimization parameter is also going to say something else that the error that I would get in my model will then move towards zero as t goes to infinity because this, in fact, would have to have negative eigenvalues, has to have stable eigenvalues. So I can choose k sub f, and I can optimize k sub f in similar kinds of methods that I use to say to optimize for k sub r in the linear quadratic regulator case. So this is why you call it linear quadratic estimator because I'm doing a, another quadratic metric function to then optimize for k sub f. And this turns out to work really well because at some point I can eventually say, well, let me now talk about that error again. And I can do x, you know, again, a small little bit of math in this to kind of think about what am I doing. And I can reformulate this as I get a dx dt um, just expand that with x of t, that gives me an x minus e, right? Because this is, this is what I have for my feedback in the linear quadratic regulator. It's that estimate. I, now I can include the disturbance, and I can also include the noise, because I know where all this is coming from. And what happens with the x and the estimator is that this now looks like a matrix expression unto itself. Now x and e are vectors, but now let me just make it even a longer vector of x and e. And something interesting comes out of this. As I get a um, basically an upper diagonal matrix, which I get the a minus b k r, which is exactly what I would have gotten from linear quadratic regulator. I get this other structure, a minus k f c, which is what I would have gotten from the linear quadratic estimator. So all of that's looking pretty good. And if I have no disturbance, this is basically just the two things look like they happen independently. Um, yes, I do have this cross term, but for the most part, all the dynamics are going to be set up by the eigenvalues, which would be set up by the eigenvalues along the diagonal elements. Yay! So I've separated. I can make this work. Everything is great. Until I start asking questions about the noise and the variances and the shifts and so forth. And I do at least get a formulation to start to say, I can now think about how they're going to affect this linear system. And they look like actually inputs into the linear system that I've now created. And so now I can ask, how well is this gonna stabilize, particularly stabilizing to a zero kind of location or effectively a constant because you always move the constants out when you're actually talking about these structures. So what's useful is you can actually see an entire unified structure. A unified structure where I can do linear quadratic regulation. I can also then do a linear quadratic estimation to get an x of t. That x of t approaches what is the actual x in here. If I set this up right, if I guarantee stability in the first place, I get stability there too. Great. So now I can put all this together and go, okay, I get an optimal controller. And then I move on to the next like questions, like what do I do with the noise and disturbances, and try to figure out how to put that all together. But there is a straightforward formulation to how to build a controller in this particular space and make it as optimal as I could given these kinds of constraints.